Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the movie trivia showdown. Mark Ellis over there. I'm Christian Harloff. And this one, this is the one that everyone's been talking smack about. And I'm not talking about since we announced the match. I mean, years, years upon years. I'm talking about the James Bond exhibition match here, Mark Ellis. And people have been saying, I'm the best of James Bond. You can't beat me. I'm the best of James Bond. Well, today we're going to find out who is the best at James Bond. Christian, it, every man wants to be him. Every woman wants to be with him. You and I just want the new movie to come out. This is going to be the first James Bond three-way that involves just dudes. And I got to think that the, the the odds on favor would be the guy who, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's on the wheel wedge for James Bond is Mike the Killer Kalinowski. Well, whether it is or isn't, he should be. Uh, he's proven more so than anybody of how much he does know about James Bond. You have to give him the, the odds on favorite. This is not even a slice in inner geekdom. We're talking about a two-time inner geekdom champion and a former teams champion. So, and on the teams and singles in his career, he has hit Bond. Now, the rule was made because of Mike Kalinowski. That there's only so many times you could put a particular category on a wheel because he knows James Bond so well. Now, the joke was one of the best jokes of the night and probably, probably of the year with the James Bond stuff, but it wasn't supposed to be just dudes. Emma Fife also really knows James Bond. Yep. However, Emma Fife is really really dedicated to all the patrons out there and she had she was helping ben bateman who has a coaching session tonight which is one of our tiers that we have on here where you can coach people have been uh, signing up for fan leagues and knowing now that they can get coached by a schmodown player so they're signing up to this tier and are coaching and ben bateman did that today and emma fife is helping him because this is the first one he's done so emma couldn't make it over today so it is going to be a triple threat nonetheless it is a really really it, it stacked competitors here yeah, Christian, it's it's going to be a barn burner for sure. It's going to be a three round match, and it, when you look at James Bond, there's so many different James Bonds that we've seen over the years. There's so many different movies and so much lore to get immersed in. By comparison, Star Wars has what like 11, 12 movies now. Yeah. Lord of the Rings has six, and we have categories that James Bond. We're about to hit our 25th James Bond movie whenever November or 2025 gets here, and so in the meantime, these three fellows have to know a lot about a lot of movies. Who's going to come out on top? We're about to find out but well, we're going to find out because like we, we mentioned mike kalinowski obviously and mike kalinowski last year inside of corruption what did he do he he did a lot of a uh, lot of moves and he caused a lot of disruption and one of those things he did was turn late late to the party on their head by recruiting tim the tank franco into corruption well the tank is not on corruption anymore he's on the usual suspects or excuse me he's on uh he's on the quirky mercs so whether or not these two are seeing eye to eye anymore who knows we're going to find out once the bell rings but the odd the odd man out if you will it's not back to the future it's james bond so the question is how is the boat going to fare now here's the thing you have you've all heard me talk about the boat he's one of my he's one of my favorite characters and personalities in all of the kid talks a lot of crap yep he really does he talks a lot of crap and the question is can he back it up when it comes to bond if he does He's going to have bragging rights over the two-time Inner Geekdom champion. And you know you're never going to hear the end of it on the rundown. So there's a lot to be said, and I'm ready to get going. And Mark, just to give us all a, a little uh, a little happiness, how about this? How about that? Well, that's the, Are what, those Johnny English sound effects? The Bond whistle. It's a nice little Bond whistle. You oh, think, I knew, oh. think I knew about that before uh, this thing started? Absolutely, I did. Christian, I believe that's from Live and Let Die, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, see, we both know nothing. Uh, all right, so I'm ready to get going. How about you? <laughs> Shaken and stirred. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Three rounds in the exhibition category of James Bond. Introducing first, he is the host of the schmodown rundown and the boat. Brad Gilmore. There he is, Brad. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm excited for this. You know, you're talking about the, the beef between Tim Franco and Mike Kalinowski. One of these men is Daniel Craig. One of these men is Sean Connery. But there's only one, George Lazenby. Scott. Yeah. That's very true. Are you ready? Are you, are you see, look, you have watched Mike Kalinowski win championships with James Bond. You have seen it. You've reported on it. You've talked about it. You don't think you know, are you a little intimidated by by the killer? I think that just similar to in the Back to the Future match, I felt like the pressure was on me to perform. In this one, the pressure's on Mike. So I'm gonna get to have like I'm gonna get to be like James Bond just at a shooting range, just just taking shots and seeing what I can do. And if I end up hitting big, oh brother, 
Diamonds are forever, and so is a win against Mike Kalinowski. Look at you. And his opponent, representing the quirky Mercs, he is Tim the Tank Franco. The Tank, first appearance here in Season 7, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have you, Tank. Yeah, I love to be here. Um, this is something I've been wanting for a long time. Uh, I think the fans have obviously been wanting it for a long time. I've been talking a lot of shit. Um, I'm ready to go. And <laughs> it's all good. So let me ask you a question, Tank. So you, uh, we haven't seen you since last season, and when we last saw you, things are pretty good with you and Mike. What's the relationship like? Well, you know, I... Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm in a better place. I like. I like. I like the team I'm on right now. I, I think I got some uh, some great people behind me. Um, you know, Mike's a great person. Um, but I don't know. I just don't know if corruption was the thing for me. You know, I've been trying to give my shirt away and nobody seems to want it. So, <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, their opponent. He is the former movie trivia showdown team champion and the former two-time inner geekdom champion of the world, Mike. The Killer Kalinowski! There he is. Welcome, everybody. Good to see everybody. Look at that smooth cat. Look at him. How you doing, man? Mike, what's going on? I'm feeling good. This is the first time I put on a shirt and coat in about a month and a half, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> Makes sense. So, look, you got... You got enough for you boys. You got the boat here. You got the tank. Uh, Boats talked a lot about how, he, you know, on, on the rundown each and every week about how he just wants to get you in here because he can beat you. Any words to the boat? Well, this thing, you know, uh, Tim uh, pointed out my two misses that I've missed in my bond questions so far. Uh, and what I've done with bond so far in the league, that's without studying. That's just my knowledge of having watched the films. I was on a bond marathon up until hoping to see No Time to Die. That uh, didn't happen. But I've been watching the bond films and applying that level of inner geekdom studying to my bond studying. So I'm at a whole nother level right now. Uh -huh. uh, like Brad said, you know, I brought my punchable face to this match. And <laughs> yes, uh, you did. The, the, the onus is on me here. The honest, the onus, whatever you want to say it, is on me to prove myself to these boys. Uh, I'm ready to have some fun, boys. Let's have some, let's uh, get into this. Let's be shaken but not stirred here. All right, well, with that, Mark, you can see that they are ready. All three of them seem pretty confident. They have the bond confidence, <clears throat> if you will. Will you go ahead and tell them round number one? Yeah, Christian, uh, go back to the go back to everybody's shot for a sec. Does does this not look like a conference call of Bond villains just all hanging out in quarantine? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, give me my FaceTime back. Thank you. <clears throat> round number one. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question from a corner of the James Bond movie trivia showdown exhibition championship universe, just simply write down your best attempt at an answer. Hopefully you have a writing utensil and a writing tablet with you. You can even use your hand if you want to. Something to write down so that after 15 seconds, once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, you can show it to the camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. So Christian, I, I only have one question left for the tank and for killer. Is it, look, I know that we've all uh, happily purchased Brad Gilmore's back from the future book available wherever fine books are sold. Would either of you gentlemen buy a James Bond book written by Brad Gilmore? Well, let's see how he does here. We'll see if uh, the facts going to be the facts. Yeah, it depends on how he how his performance in this match goes. So that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we ask uh, we ask the killer. Are you ready? Yeah, of course I'm ready. Let's go for this. Uh, tank. I'm ready. Boat. Let's do it. All right, then let's get ready to schmo down, ladies and gentlemen. What was, what was that? That what? was the weakest was, I, ready to schmo I've ever heard. <laughs> I had a question. Who's who are we going to first on this one? Sorry, fellas. You. All right, let's do it. Okay, do the thing. And let's get ready to throw down. What? <laughs> Old man. Hey, it's going to go fast PM. You talked over me. You talked over me. <laughs> I had it. Talked over me. All right, ready? Here we go. Round number. Let's one. get ready to schmo down. <laughs> I'll be, I'll, can I do? Can I do yours? Let's get ready to schmo down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Round number one, question number one. The first category, Roger Moore. What was the final film? What was the final film in which Roger Moore 
played James Bond? Uh, six questions in round number one. Christian, do you have a definitive favorite Bond of all time? It, it would be the Daniel Craig one. Wow. It, recency bias or you, you've, you've given oh. this thought? No, I just think they're better movies. And five, four. Not a better Bond. Two. My favorite Bond? One. Terrible. I don't know yet. Uh, Kalinowski. A view to a kill. Yes. And Tim. A view to a kill. And boat. A view to a kill. One to one to one. Mark, next question. All right. I, I would have gone with enthusiasm. Moonraker. I was looking for Moonraker. Um, your question, uh, the second question in round number one, is in the category of Daniel Craig, Christian's favorite Bond. And the question is, who plays Vesper Lind in 2006's Casino Royale? A question for you, Mark, is how long before one of us is corrected on a pronunciation? Um, I think we'll last we longer than we would have in a Harry Potter Lord of the Rings match. Five, four, three, two, one. Tim? Eva Green. Yes. And Brad? Eva Green. And Mike? I don't know, Eva Green, but I don't know if it's got an E on the end of it, but Eva Green. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. And next question. She's fancy. I don't know. Sean Connery. Sean Connery is the next question here. Boys, what is the name of the henchman who uses his hat as a weapon in Goldfinger? Do you think that we should have made um, Austin Powers a category in here just to throw the gang off a little bit? I'd be down with that. I would love that. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Brad. Don't ask Brett Sheridan, but it's odd job. That's correct. Mike. Odd job. Yes, and Tim. Odd job. Correct. All three. Three, three, three. All right. Um, More Mark. strange task is the Austin Powers equivalent. Go ahead. No, it's random. Uh, random task. Random task. That's right. All right. Your next category is in Pierce Brosnan, the man who introduced me to the world of James Bond. In what film does Bond go up against the Janus crime syndicate Christian that's the Janice crime syndicate not to be confused with Chandler Bing's girlfriend Janice from Friends uh -oh, we'll see <laughs> oh <that>. my god <laughs> five four make it stop three two one pens down please and Mike that would be golden eye that's incorrect no I'm kidding that's right uh, Tim Tim Franco golden eye yeah, and Brett Goldeneye. Yes, it is. Four to four to four. As we thought, all perfect thus far. As we get to our next question here, Timothy Dalton. I've heard of him. Flash. That's my favorite Bond. Is he really? Yes, right. he's my favorite Bond. All right. Good for you. What was the Thank first you. film <laughs> in which Timothy Dalton played Bond? Ooh, man. Can I get in this match just for this question? I know this one. No. Well. It was worth a shot. <laughs> 15 years of friendship down the drain. Five, four, three. No. Two, <laughs> one. Pens down, please. And we start with uh, Tim. The Living Daylights. Yes, Brad. The Living Daylights. And Mike. Living Daylights. Yep. Young Brad Gilmore was uh, questioning himself with that one. I always get those mixed up. All right. Next question, Mark. This is it. Uh, for a perfect round. That's right. For a perfect round, you will be asked the bonus question if any or all of the competitors get this question correct. Your last question in round number one comes from the world of Bond Girls. And the query is, what is the full name of Ursula Andress's character in Dr. No? Christian obviously playing off of that title. True. With his Dr. Yes, although... <laughs> My previous question seems that Christian is, in fact, a doctor now. Five. Four. Doctor sound effects. Three. <laughs> Two. Doctor fart. One. I forget who goes. Uh, Mike. Brad. Or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Honey Rider? Yes. Tim. Honey Rider. And Brad. Honey Rider. And we're all... And look at that. Perfect. Oh, boys. Perfect. Look at this, boy. Six, six to six. 
as we get to our bonus question. Now, because you all got it right, you all have to write it down. Same way you did for the previous six questions. Here it is. Which actor has portrayed Bond in the most official Eon Studios Bond films? Ooh. I'm going to go Rowan Atkinson. Good one. You are so done. <laughs> you just want to go to bed. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> Boat. Sir Roger Moore. Yes, sir. Kalinowski. Sir Roger Moore. Yep. And Tim Franken. My favorite Bond, Roger Moore. Seven films. Seven. 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 Seven it is. We are perfect here, Mark, all the way through round number one. And how does round number two go? It smelled like another overtime, sudden death indeed, Christian. But maybe that'll be determined by round number two, known as the wheel round. I don't have a wheel here, and I can't go to the studio. And we don't have the electronic wheel because everybody besides me hates it. But I do have the wheel algorithm in my head. So all I need from each competitor is a number that can range from 1 to 10. 10 different slices on the wheel. Don't worry, I'll tell you what the slices are before you spin in a random order. Once we settle on your category, you are going to be asked four questions in that world of James Bond. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Because this is a three-way match, if a competitor misses a question, go ahead and start writing down your attempt at a steal on your whiteboard to save time, and then we can go right to you for the possible steal. Christian, back to you. Mike is uh, yeah. he, he's the higher ranked competitor. So Mike, if you want, you can go first, hey, you can defer. Uh, you're gonna, when, when are you going to tell us the slices? What we got up there? You can say I'll go it. first. No, we can, we can tell you what I'm, I'm going to go first, but let's see the slices. I'm going to go first. Let's see as soon as you ask let's nicely, I will give you the wheel slices. Um, your wheel slices yeah, are uh, it, 1 to 10. There's no opponents and there's no spinner's choice on here. So in no particular order, your wheel slices are Bond Girls, 60s and 70s, scores and soundtracks, 80s and 90s, Sean Connery, 2000s, 2010s, Roger Moore, Daniel Craig, Timothy Dalton, and George Lazenby is one slice. Pierce Brosnan rounds out the list. So you got all your Bonds, you have Bond girls, scores and soundtracks, and then two decades per slice with 60s and 70s, 80s and 90s, 2000s and 2010s. Sounds good. All right, you wanna go? Yeah, I'll go first, yeah, do right. it. From um, one to 10, what number feels lucky, Mike? Four. All right, you have spun 2000 and 2010s. Do you want to keep it or spin again? Yeah, we're going to keep that one. All right. All right. Mike got four questions here. In the beginning of Die Another Day, Bond is rescued from North Korea in a prisoner exchange. Who does MI6 trade to rescue Bond? Zhao. That was correct. All right. Wow. All right. Two points for Mike Kalinowski there. There's four questions, right, guys? Four. Yep. What is the name of the silent henchman that Dave Batista plays in Spectre? Mr. Hinks. Yes, it is. Two more points for Mike Kalinowski. He brings himself to 11. In the film Skyfall, Silva was given up to given up by M to which country in exchange for six previously captured agents? Five, four, Hong three. Kong. It's incorrect. For the steal, we go to uh, Tim Franco. China. Correct for two points and. China Brad also had it. So big steal there for the two opponents here. So nine, 11, nine, nine. Big nice, nice job, guys. Nice job. All right. So, Mike, your final question here. What is the name of the MI6 agent that Gemma Arditon plays in Quantum of Solace? Strawberry Fields. Yes, for two more points. All right. So, Mike Kalinowski, 
Only missed one, but it was a big miss because both of his opponents capitalized on steel. So now we're going to ask uh, Tim Franco if he would like to go or defer to Brett. I'm just going to go. You're going to go. All right. All right, Tim. From 1 to 10, I need a number that feels lucky to you in your personal life. Let's do seven. All right. You have spun Bond Girls. Do you want to keep it or spin again? Let's spin again. All right. Uh, I'll go three. All right. You have spun Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig is the spin. And four questions are about to come at you, courtesy of Mr. Craig, who wrote all these himself. Your first question for two points. In Casino Royale, Le Chiffre organizes a tournament where gamblers play what variant of poker? Texas Hold'em. Two points for Tim Franco. Good one. All right. Your next question in the world of Daniel Craig. Who plays C, the head of the new Joint Intelligence Task Force in Spectre? Andrew Scott. Two more points for Tim Franco, Christian. He's within two of Mike. Actually, he's tied Mike Callen out. With that steal that he got, he's now tied with Mike. Yep. I'm sure you share my excitement. (laughs) (laughs) Tim, your penultimate question in the world of Daniel Craig. What object, which belonged to Vesper Lind, does Bond drop in the snow at the end of Quantum of Solace? Five. A bracelet? Incorrect. So no. for a steal. Uh, yeah. Brad first for the steal. Her locket? Locket is incorrect. And Mike for a two point steal? It's a necklace with an Algerian knot. That's correct. Mike gets his points. I thought back. she called it a locket in the movie. A necklace. Nice uh, one, Mike. Nice one. All right. So Mike gets those two points back, but Tim can tie him up with the last question. Are you sure? Big, massive steal. Uh, here we go. Big mast of steel. And All right. You know what? I, I feel like I got to challenge that. I feel like they call it a locket in the movie. All right, so Brad Gilmore challenged that it was a locket slash necklace. And unfortunately, uh, after conferring with the judges, we have not found any evidence that it is mentioned as a locket in the film Quantum of Solace. So we are going to stick with the one answer, necklace. So the challenge is overruled. Mike Kalinowski does get the two points. And Christian, what a big steal back that is for Mike, reclaiming two points that he gave up during his round two questions. That's absolutely right. And Tim Franco, though, can tie it up here. He can tie it up with Mike should he hit the next question. All right, Tim, your final question in the world of Daniel Craig. In Skyfall, while being evaluated by MI6, Bond is given a word association test. When agent is said, what word does Bond say in response? Job. That is incorrect. So another big steal is on the table for both Brad Gilmore and Mike Kalinowski. If they can pull it off, Christian, no aid of multiple choice. You can repeat the question. Can you give him the question now? Certainly. In Skyfall, while being evaluated by MI6, Bond is given a word association test. When agent is said, what word does Bond say in response? And five. Four, three, two, one. This time we start with Mike. Uh, is it provocateur? It is indeed, Mike. Ooh, yeah, two, I didn't have it. Nice, Mike. That's a good question. Wow. Well, how about that? Mike Kalinowski was almost in danger of being down four points and finds himself up four over Tim Franco right now. And But Brad Gilmore still... Could get very, very close here. Should he have a good round? Let's go, Brad. What is your number? Let's go eight. All right, Brad. You have spun Bond. You spun Bond girls. You want to keep again. it? Spin again. <laughs> All right. Five. 
You have spun 60s and 70s. Okay. All righty. All right, five, 60s and 70s. All right. All right, Brad, here we go. 60s and 70s. How many actors portrayed James Bond in official Eon Studios through the 60s and 70s? 20 seconds to answer. Three. Correct. Wow. Mr. Brad Gilmore didn't even need it. Good, good pull. All right. Which 60s and 70s Bond film features scenes set in the following locations? Florida, Kentucky, and Switzerland. Can you repeat the question? Yep, first one. Which 60s and 70s Bond film features scenes set in the following locations? Florida, Kentucky, and Switzerland. And you're asking for two films? Just one. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, Goldfinger. Correct. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah, it's 60s and 70s. Yeah, the 60s yeah, and yeah. 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Category, yeah. I was confused for a second. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that was. So now you find yourself with 13 points tied with Tim Franco as you get to your next question here. All right. In The Spy Who Loved Me, how does Carl Stromberg kill his secretary when he discovers she has betrayed him? Multiple choice. Is it A, shoots her, B, drowns her, C, feeds her to sharks, or D, strangles her? B. It's incorrect for one point steal. Again, the question is, in The Spy Who Loved Me, how does Carl Stromberg kill his secretary when he discovers she has betrayed him? Is it A, shoots her, B, drowns her, C, feeds her to sharks, D, strangles her? We start with Tim Franco. Feeds her to sharks. That's correct for one point. And Mike? C, drops her in a shark tank. That is correct. So Mike Kalinowski. Thinking of a different movie. Okay. One more still. Mike Kalinowski, 18. Brad Gilmore with that miss finds himself with 13. And Tim Franco now is 14. Brad, you can get yourself within two of Mike if you can get this one correct. Within three of Mike. He's got 18, right? If, oh, yeah, three. Brad has 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find yourself within three of Mike if you can get this correct. Brad, what was the last film to feature Bernard Lee as M? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Is it A, Moonraker, B, The Spy Who Loved Me, C, The Man with the Golden Gun, D, Live and Let Die? My gut says The Man with the Golden Gun. It's incorrect. So, again, guys, what was the last film to feature Bernard Lee as M? Was it A, Moonraker, B, The Spy Who Loved Me, C, The Man with the Golden Gun, D, Live and Let Die? We start with Mike Kalinowski. The name Moonraker? That is correct. And Tim Franco. Moonraker. Yes, it is. So big two misses there for Brad Gilmore as he finds himself now six behind Mike Kalinowski, two behind Tim Franco. As we get into round number three, Mark, we find ourselves 19 points for the former two-time Intergeekdom champion. Brad Gilmore, 13 points. Tim Franco, 15 points as we get to round number three. Correct, Christian. I mean, look, we expected Mike Kalinowski to show up with his A game, and he's done that. But these two contenders not giving many inches, and they both have a chance to sneak back into the game in round number three. Round number three features 12 categories of Bond movie trivia schmodown know-how. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next one is going to be worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. The way we get the category is you. You give us series of numbers we need three numbers from each of you these numbers can range from 1 to 12 and must be dissimilar from any of your opponent's numbers all right so we go to mike kalinowski first mike from 1 to 12 yeah. what feels lucky sir uh let's do 2 7 and 12. all right mm -hmm. and tim franco you're next up what numbers do you like uh six nine and eleven all right, and Brad Gilmore, the boat. Your three numbers, sir. I'll go uh, three, ten, and eight. 
So, Brad, you chose category number three. Category number three, Brad, that would be... Category number three is Bond Villains. Bond Villains for category number three for two points to tie Tim Franco. What Bond villain has been portrayed in the most films? Blofeld. That is correct. Two points. Brad Gilmore ties Tim Franco. Now, Tim Franco, he needs to hit his two in order to bounce it back to Brad Mark. That's correct, Christian. And Tim Franco choosing number six for his two-point question. So, Tim, that corresponds to uh, Daniel Craig. You ever hear of him? He was in Layer Cake. I have heard of him. I've seen a few. I hope you've heard of his movies and James Bond too, because this question for two points can get you two ahead of Brad Gilmore and two within two of Mike Kalinowski. Your question: Who plays Eve Moneypenny in Skyfall? and specter naomi harris two points for tim franco all right tim franco now has 17 points mike kalinowski still in the lead with 19 brad gilmore now to get ahead of franco again needs to hit his three-pointer and brad gilmore chose category number 10. that is sean connery all right brad here you go in which film is the nasa spacecraft jupiter 16 Hijacked in orbit. Five, four, three. You only live twice. Correct. For three points, Brad nice Gilman. Ball. Nice ball. Put some twelve over Tim Franco now. So now Tim Franco has to hit his uh, his three pointer. Excuse me, which is number nine. That's right, Christian, and it corresponds to two other actors that I hope Tim Franco has heard of. It's Timothy Dalton and George Lazenby. Yes. And your question for three points to regain the lead, not only over Brad Gilmer, but also over Mike Kalinowski for the moment. What Oscar-winning actor had an early role as the henchman Dario in License to Kill? Benicio Del Toro. Tim Franco's in the lead, Christian. Tim Franco. Tim Franco now, 20 points. Brad Gilmore, 18. Mike Kalinowski, 19. Brad Gilmore now needs to hit his five. If he does, then he forces the hand of Mike Kalinowski. But if he misses, he is out. So, Brad Gilmore, you chose category number one. That is from 2000 and 2010s. Here you go. Are you ready? Yeah. Inspector. What is the name of the Global Intelligence Initiative that is revealed to be part of the Spectre Organization's master plan? Two JTs left. Five. Four. Three. Two. Repeat. Second one. Inspector. What is the name of the Global Intelligence Initiative that is revealed to be part of the Spectre Organization's master plan? Quantum. And with that, Brad Gilmore has been eliminated via TKO by Mike Kalinowski here. It is uh, Nine Eyes. Nine Eyes. Nine Eyes. Nine Eyes was it, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Really great job, Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna put you in the. I, I, uh, in I the, buy a book. I buy a book. <laughs> <would know. laughs> All right. Well, Brad Gilmore is now in the waiting room. It is now Tim Franco with 20. Mike Kalinowski now is finally going to be answering questions in the third round here, as it was his score of 19 that TKO'd Brad Gilmore. So now, Mike, you had number two. Number two, Mike, is Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Okay. All right. Here, if two points to take the lead, what was the first film in which Roger Moore played Bond? Living Let Die. Two points. Mike Kalinowski retakes the lead. And because of that, he sees himself now with the opportunity to win the game as Tim Franco mm. needs to hit his five pointer in order to stay in this thing. If he hits it, 
then Mike will have to answer both of his questions in order, or one of the questions to win the game. So, Mark, he chose category number 11. He did, Christian, and that corresponds to the perpetrator of the run-by fruiting Pierce Brosnan. And your question, to regain the lead over Mike Kalinowski, Tim, the opening scene of GoldenEye takes place how many years before the main events of the film? Three JTEs left. That's a great question. That's a great question. That's a great question. I will take all the credit for the writers who actually did oh, this. That's a good question. Four, three, two, eight. Okay, first one. The opening scene of GoldenEye takes place how many years before the main events film? Five, four, three. Repeat. Second one. The opening scene of GoldenEye takes place how many years before the main events of the film? I'm going to say four years. And your winner! Ladies Is it nine? Yes, it's nine. Mike the Killer Kalinowski! He does it. I got to drop you out there, Tim. So, Mike... You did it again. What's up, buddy? You did it yeah, again. It was. I wanted the perfect game, man. Gosh, darn it. Oh well, poor Damn you. It. Look at you. No, that, that was a great question. That was a great, and great, great playing by both these guys. That was fantastic. Well, so like, let me ask you it, no, Mike. So you were in yeah, the. Buddy. You're in the. You're in that first round. All all three of you guys have perfect rounds. Yeah. Second round comes. You're doing good. You missed that one question, and because of that yeah. first round where nobody missed, did you think, oh, I'm in trouble here because these guys they're not missing anything? Yeah. I yeah. sure did. Like that's, you know, I, I, it was either Hong Kong or China. He worked for the Hong Kong office and they, she says they traded him over because the transition from when Britain or Hong Kong was going back to the mainland with between Britain. And if I went multiple choice, I would have been down one point. So I went, if I want, I got, I got my ego went, my ego went, I want to get the perfect game. Well, either way, uh, either way look at that. But I mean. either way, you know, great, great, great questions. And, and, and yeah, fantastic match. Look at this. It's fantastic. Yeah, Mike, I, I, I got to ask yeah, you, I, I know it's very embarrassing for you to be on a national stage like this and miss a Bond question. You must be horrified. Um, when yeah. you did miss that one and then all of yeah. your opponents got the steal correct, can you right. give us a little wizard behind the curtain? Did you actually start to get a little nervous because you usually seem so cool, calm and collected? Absolutely. I, absolutely. I, was, I got nervous because I knew I, I don't know Brad as far as his Bond, but I know Tim and I know Tim. The two times I've missed questions in gameplay, he knew the answers to them. Um, you know, so I was like, oh, here we go. But I had like, you know, playing any match, you, and I've learned being this far in the game, you can't count yourself out of it, even to that last round. You've got to hold on. And, and it just was like, well, here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, no. And then those steals started happening. So, and that's why I love I love going first. A lot of players like, you know, they defer and they keep going for I love to play first. Uh, well, round two, so. so you have these you have these two guys who they definitely show their knowledge there's no doubt about it with both yeah uh, absolutely you know, absolutely but still the one person out there that's still every time hitting the questions from the field while other people are playing is emma fife couldn't make it here today uh wasn't able to make it really wants to get in there would you be up for the for the one-on-one -on -one challenge with uh with the golden mic absolutely because I, I love the fact that emma loves bond uh, I've been watching these recently with my girlfriend, with Shannon, and she she gets a laugh out of how sexist and misogynistic those early films are. And that, I know, is a lot of girls early on, they weren't into those films. It wasn't until the later stuff with the Daniel Craig films where a female audience really came into the Bond. So to know that Emma is good at Bond and great at Bond and that she loves those old stuff, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Emma as Bond. It would be my pleasure. It would be an honor. So, Boat... Tank, you yeah. guys got up on Mike, and I'm going to ask you the, the converse of the question I just asked Mike, because you all had a steal over the Bond all-time champ. At that point in round number two, you had to be feeling pretty good about yourselves, right? Tim, I'll start with you, then go to Brad. I was, so it was like, it's like two sides. I was feeling good, but I knew also that, that Mike, you know, isn't going to miss very many, the fact that he did miss one. So I, had to, I knew I had to take advantage of that moment. Um, but also, I mean, with this type of match, you know, anytime someone misses something, that's that's a lot of time how it ends up playing out. Um, you know, I missed two in round two. Uh, I should have gone with my gun on one of them, but I didn't know that other one I missed. 
Um, I just couldn't pull it. Uh, I, um, so, but uh, this was a lot of fun. Mike, hats off to you. Great match. Absolutely. But it was so much fun, buddy. So much fun. Uh, Brad? Yeah, I mean, when, when I got the steal off, off Mike, I did feel good about it. I thought that, um, you know, 60s and 70s, those are the bonds that I revisited a lot. So I thought I was going to do well in that category. Went the multiple choice to try to minimize it because the fish, te- was it fed to sharks or did she drown? I couldn't remember. Then I started thinking license to kill. She, You know, Felix gets fed to sharks. So I kind of got tripped yeah. up a little bit there. And then the locket necklace thing. It is a love knot. I guess I heard locket. Um, you know, that would have done those two points would have done me well. But, you know, I, I it was fun here. You know, I just like for college, I didn't study. And uh, somehow <laughs> I, I came out pretty good. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely, buddy. So let me ask you, Brad, you know, like, you know, you've goofed about it on the rundown before, but you talk about how good Mike is and to see if he really is that good. So the question, is he really that good? Yeah, he's great. I mean, there's no doubt about it that, that Mike Kalinowski was great. It, it's funny. One of the I don't know if it was this year or last year. He was playing in a match. He got Bond. I think you missed Bernard Lee or something to that effect. And I remember the yeah. first thing he did, he ran up to me after the match. He goes, you got Bernard Lee, didn't you? I was like, yeah, I did. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> And it was always this playful yeah. thing. I mean, but the guy's a champion, you know, much like, um, and, and, you know, it's fun, fun for me to be a spectator and then compete in these exhibitions because you really realize um, how great the champions of the league are, especially in the IG categories, the way that they study, the knowledge that they know, the details that they pick up on are so next level. So, I mean, I got to, you know, tip my hat to to the killer on this one. It was a fun game, though. I, I, I think I, I think I showed my own. I think I held myself. Yeah, ab- you absolutely did it. And, Tim, in your defense, buddy, that nine years for GoldenEye, I don't remember it being mentioned in the movie. I only know that because I read the script a few years ago. And I was like, oh, it's nine years, huh? You know what's funny? I watched GoldenEye over the weekend. And after that scene happened in the, in the, as I was watching it, I'm like, I need to look and see, like, because I don't remember how many years, it, what the gap is. I need to look it up. And I never looked it up. So they it. never put it on the screen. It's never like a title. They talk about it. Yeah. Well, but Tim, man, uh, what a, what, that's, a, that's a great question. Who wrote that question? That's a hats off on that question. That's a phenomenal that question. question. And the pro- provocative tour one, that was a great question. So, yeah. yeah. Whoever, if it's Skolski, if it, 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 Patrick, you guys writing these, that, those are great uh, questions, guys. Phenomenal the whole, questions. The whole team, the whole team uh, has really uh, gone above and beyond. And I'm glad that they're yeah. getting the love that they deserve because they've been, they've been Cheers really. To you guys. Well, it lived up to what we thought it was going to be. Mike Kalinowski does it again. You know, he's. He, he just shows what he knows, Mark, and he came in the favorite and he delivered on it because he really does. I mean, that's he he is. He, we know we've been using this a lot, but he's the Alex Damon of Bond. Yeah, I mean, he, he he proved himself as the Bond champion once again. Tim Franco, a worthy runner up silver medalist and Brad Gilmore. Look, I think that if he did write a Bond book, he'd be selling a lot of them right now. So make sure you all check out Back from the Future, wherever you buy your fine books. And uh, Christian, w- w- when you talk about these exhibition matches, what a wealth of knowledge that has been on display. Whether you talk about your Alex Damon's uh, in Star Wars or you talk about Award of the Rings or however specific Gerber, you can yeah. get in categories, it seems like we have a multitude of players that are all vying for that top belt. So it's it's been a weird situation. It's been strange, new to us, but I think that these exhibition matches have proven the strength of the Schmodown and the Schmodown community. So thank you once again to all of our great patrons out there. Totally agree. And, and I, I don't even have to, I mean, I, I assume for everybody who's uh, been watching this has been enjoying it as much as we have because it's been fun to call them but as as fans uh, of this sport it's been fun to watch it and to see the greats play and to see you know just one level part of their of their appearances and to watch someone like Brad Gilmore come in because remember Brad Gilmore is a guy who, who he he knows this game very very well he, he hosts a show every week but he's never competed and he's competed twice and he's held his own on both and and had it not been for the for the oscars category then who knows maybe brad gilmore is is a back to the future champion at this point but uh but either way it's been great performances also great to see the tank back in action tanks one of my favorite uh competitors out there his wealth of knowledge and and to see him back in action maybe this gets the the juices flowing for him that he wants to come back in you know yeah, it, it's a matter of any competitor, whether you're Count Alski and you're doing a Bond rewatch or you're Brad watching Back to the Future or Tim, it's it's you're trying to time your study with when we're all allowed back into a studio to start competing and start to get matches back on the table. So you're trying to weigh that against reading the news in the world every day. And, and it's a process. And the, the, the best thing I can say about Tim is that just having him on the show made me thirsty for a good Arizona IPA. So I'm going to check the fridge and see if I have any of those in there. And he might not have been able to get his actual Twitter account back going, but he definitely got his mojo flowing when it comes to uh, it comes to Bond because you could see Mike Kalinowski. I'll tell you what, after the after the spectacular, he looked a little rattled, right? And 
he he said it himself. He needed to find the love for his game. You saw it looked like that boxer that maybe had, for a second had lost his step, but now he's popping that jab again and throwing right hooks, and he looks like the killer of old. Granted, it's it's one particular match, but it's the spirit, and you saw it in him today when he was playing against these two. He didn't get rattled when he missed that question. He said, all right, well, now I'm just going to have to come back and win in grand fashion, and, and he almost won by, uh, by TKO over both of them. Yeah, he was cool, calm, collected, and like it was fun to dress up for a Bond match, albeit oh. nobody else can smell what this suit is. But it's not it's it, it's not fresh from Milton Eadies, I'll give you that. How's that? In the word of James Bond, Christian, I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. Um, all right.